Good morning. You, come in here. Let's talk. Hey, Jenna. Hey, Timothy. So today, we're going to talk to you about the ordered border. That's what I'm going to, that's, that's what I'm calling it. I'm coining that term, the ordered border. Ordered border. We want ordered borders. That's all we want. Ordered borders. We want order. We want law and order. And I'm going to talk about the ordered border argument that you have not heard before. You have never heard this argument before, and it's one of the best humanitarian arguments against illegal immigration. We want an ordered border, so I'm going to tell you why. But first, get something to drink. Get something that tastes really, really good. Some coffee, Diet Coke, water. Mm, let's do a citation to the Scott Adams simultaneous sip. Clink. Okay, so this is my last day in DC. You can hear the trains, my last day in DC. I'm getting ready to fly out. So let's talk about the order border. Okay, one of the problems with having people just coming across willy-nilly wherever they want illegally coming in is this is a massive health risk to us. So what they will not tell you is that all the people coming in have not been vaccinated, okay? So people coming from third world countries have not been vaccinated for measles, have not been vaccinated for mumps, have not been vaccinated for rubella, on and on and on and on and on. So these people come in, okay, and they hang out either in sanctuary cities all together, huddled together, or they get put in these detention centers all together. And this is a massive health risk because none of these people are vaccinated for the diseases that we worry about in America. So this is a huge health risk. Nobody is telling you that. Nobody's talking about that. Okay, it's even worse because the people coming up from third world countries in South America, there are, yeah, Trump 2020, there are nasty diseases in South America, okay? South America and, and uh, Central America are in the tropics and there are nasty tropical diseases like Zika virus, dengue virus, yellow fever, malaria, all these diseases, okay, you can get infected with these diseases. You get bit by a mosquito, a mosquito can give you that disease, and then that disease can sit in your body while you move around. And these people coming up, we have no idea how many of these people are infected with these terrible diseases. Like, and if we have the mosquitoes in America where if they come to these detention centers, the mosquitoes can start biting them and start spreading these diseases in America. And every year we see new cases of Zika in Florida, Texas, Alabama. Where do you think those diseases are coming from? Like they're coming up from Central, from Central and South America. So nobody is talking about the health risk. Just There's actually like a health risk to having Im illegal immigrants pouring across. So if you, if you actually, I've actually, I study this. This is actually one of the classes I teach is medical entomology. And if you study malaria outbreaks, if you study the patterns in history of malaria outbreaks, whenever, whenever malaria, whenever malaria has an outbreak, what happens is there's a mass migration of a bunch of people who into a new area and then they are carrying the malaria parasites in their body. And then the mosquitoes in the local area where they move to now start transmitting those, those parasites. And then the local population who was there now gets infected and has never been exposed to this disease before and they all die. So like there is a massive health risk to just allowing people to just move disorganized without order across borders, okay? And actually one of the funny things is all the liberals, the, the liberal scientists who study Ebola, okay, one of the things that they'll say is when there's an Ebola outbreak, the first thing you do is you shut down the borders. You do not let people leave and go when there is an Ebola outbreak, okay? Because that means they're going to be carrying the Ebola disease. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying Ebola is an African disease. I am not saying that we're going to have Ebola come up from South America. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying that one of the ways you prevent diseases is you shut down the border and you make it an ordered process, okay? So what I'm arguing for is an ordered border, okay? An ordered border, and this is gonna help us prevent disease in America. You've never heard that argument before, so I just wanted to talk about that. 
Okay, so I also wanted to talk about, um, the, okay, there's a couple of things I wanted to talk about. There is this new, so I am a uh, U.S. Senate primary candidate in Alabama, and I'm running, okay? And so I read all the articles on the U.S. Senate race primary in Alabama. And there's like one main news source that covers this called Yellowhammer News. They're the only ones writing articles about this, okay? So I read all their articles. And they're, they're they're so fake. Okay, so the first the the first article that they're trying to push on the Alabama people is they go around they go around to all these they go around to all these candidates and they ask them they ask them what's your opinion on this one random bridge in like South Alabama and it's there's tolls on it and people are getting mad. What's your opinion on that? And I'm thinking, I mean, I live in Auburn, but I'm thinking this is U.S. Senate. Like, do people in Alabama? really give a shit about this dumb bridge like we have complete disarray at our borders iran is building a nuclear bomb like there are so our vets are homeless there are so many other problems that are much much bigger in scale than whether you want a toll or not on some dumb bridge in alabama it's like that's just not even a legitimate like discussion that people should be having about like issues in the U.S. Senate race. That's like a local issue. So I'm just, I'm just criticizing them because they're trying to push on you what they think is important. And what they think is important is the dumbest like topic that I've ever heard about. This is a litmus test. Yeah, no shit. They're trying to like, they're trying to sway the argument because they, they have a very specific person that they want. And so they just make up stupid topics to make this one person look good and all the others look bad. Just to like sway your opinion. This is fake news. Yellowhammer news. They're idiots. But they're the only ones reporting on it. So they have to read their articles. Okay, I'll talk about also Arnold Mooney. So Arnold Mooney is, there's four other people I'm running against. Arnold Mooney is a state senator, okay, in Alabama. And this guy got donations of $300,000, okay? This guy got $300,000. And with $300,000, he can't even get his Twitter following beyond like a 1000 So I just started, I just started this Twitter account like two weeks ago, okay? So I, I, I deleted my old account and I made a brand new one to do this Alabama race, okay? So I started from zero. And in like two weeks, I went up from zero to a 1000 So I basically, this Alabama, this Arnold Mooney guy got $300,000, can't do shit shit with that. I got zero and I'm like, I'm dominating this guy. I'm going to pass him this week. The other thing I want to talk about, so John Merrill's account, John Merrill's account is, if you look at the growth, so I'm, this is just kind of like an update on the campaign. If you look at the growth rates of of people's accounts and how they're growing, my growth rate went from zero to a thousand in two weeks, okay? And John Merrill's account only grew a hundred people in that same time. So I'm, I'm passing him by a factor of 10. I'm growing at a factor of 10 greater than John Merrill, who, uh, who Yellowhammer News is reporting about, and yet they won't report about my campaign. So I'm just saying that in, I'm going to catch up with all these people and I'm going to beat these people. And let me make a prediction. Nobody will ever take me seriously until I've already won. Because the way that you get endorsements, the way that you get endorsements in the political system is you go around and you pander to people and you tell them, well, if, if I get elected, then I'll do this for you and I'll do that for you. And I don't do that, okay? I don't do that. But these other people, they walk around and to get endorsements, they pander to people, okay? So nobody is, gonna, nobody is going to endorse me until I've already won. So first they'll laugh at you, then they'll, then they'll be shocked, and then they'll cry. But it's going to be our little joke, and it'll be funny. So... That's it. Anybody got any questions? Oh, that coffee's good. Let's have one last drink. Coffee. Mmm, coffee. So if you like the videos, you can go to eaglewolfpack.com. We're revamping that website. So it's going to be a lot better. I just had set it up before because I wanted to start. But we're revamping it. It's going to look way better. Eaglewolfpack.com. Don't donate. Don't donate at EagleWolfPack.com because I want to be the first person to win U.S. Senate without donations as a one-man team. Okay, so this is going to be we're going to break history right here. Uh, you can also share my videos. You can like the videos, and you can subscribe. You can uh, follow. That's super helpful. All right, have a good day.